Hey everybody, it's me, Sean Powers. Now you know that Docker is one of my favorite technologies, at least this week. I just really love Docker. It's a lot of fun to use. Uh, it's reliable, it's stable, it's really easy to keep track of. But I remember when I first started that one of the things that intimidated me is there was no GUI interface to manage Docker containers and images and things like that. Now I'll be honest, after I've been using it for a long time, I have no desire or uh, I, I don't feel a need to have a GUI on a day-to-day -day basis, but but I remember specifically wanting a GUI so that I could see what was going on and visualize and click and point my way around doing things. So I'm going to show you two different ways that you can get a GUI set up for Docker, even if it's only until you get comfortable enough with it that you don't want to use a GUI at all. But who knows, maybe you'll want to use a GUI forever. Anyway, check these out because they're both viable options. One is easier to install, the one that's tougher to install may be a little bit more useful, but we're going to check them both out. Now the two we're gonna look at are cockpit and portainer. Now these are just containers on my Docker system that I kind of drew here really quick, like a MySQL container, Apache, Nginx. Portainer is actually a GUI for Docker, but it is a container in and of itself. You actually run it as a container in Docker. That's the part that makes it a little bit more complicated. You actually have to use Docker before you can actually use the GUI to control Docker. So a little bit of a cart before the horse kind of an issue there, but it's not too bad. We're gonna go through how to set up Portainer. The other one is Cockpit. Now Cockpit is not specifically for Docker, uh, but it's a really easy program to install and it will give you a web interface to manage those Docker containers. Uh, Cockpit is kind of an all-in-one thing, a lot like Webmin used to be, and I think Webmin still exists, but I haven't used that in years. But Cockpit seems to be a more modern version of a web interface to manage a Linux server. And like I said, it includes a Docker management portion. So we're going to install Cockpit, which is easy to install, but maybe not quite as powerful as Portainer. Now I'll admit this process is not without frustrations. The first thing we need to do though is install at install cockpit so this is on ubuntu 2004 and it's going to download the cockpit system remember i said this is a lot like webmin where you can control multiple aspects of your actual system uh, but we're specifically looking for the cockpit docker plugin and unfortunately, the team decided to no longer support the Docker plugin itself, instead to go to the Podman plugin. But here's the deal. The Podman plugin for Cockpit is not yet as robust as the Docker plugin. Plus, it's not available in Ubuntu 20.04. Grr. Thankfully, you can install Cockpit and then we can get the older version of the actual Docker plugin for Cockpit. So that's what we're going to do. It's, it's one extra step, but it's still not difficult to do. If you have Ubuntu 18.04, you can just install uh, Cockpit dash yeah, cockpit-docker, and it will install everything for you. But if you're using a newer version like I am, 2004, you're going to have to get the backported version. So we'll do that. So there, Cockpit itself is installed, but we have to go over to a web browser and let's quickly go to packages.ubuntu.com and we're going to search for cockpit-docker. And down here where it says the distribution, now focal is what we're in. However, we need Bionic Backports. And here we go. So Bionic Backports has this package. So let's click on that package and it's going to get us to cockpit docker. Let's see if we can find the installer. We'll click on all right here and this will bring us to the page where we can actually download the deb file. I'm just gonna right click here, copy the link, come back over to our Ubuntu and now do wget, we'll paste that in. And now we just need to dpackage-i and now it's installed. So we did have to go through that extra step to get that backported version of Cockpit Docker, but eventually there should be that Cockpit Podman uh, in the repository. But this is like the longest step you'll have to do. And then if we go back to our browser and we head over to HTTP Docker 9090, it's gonna say it's just a self-signed certificate, but we should be able to go into here and now log in. Now here is another problem. By using the cockpit program, if we want to have full access to things, we're going to log in as the root user. It is possible to set up a regular user and then give them privileges, but I'm just going to log in as the root user. 
because that's the simplest. Just know it's not really a great idea to log in as the root user, but that will give you full access to it, including if you look now, there's a whole bunch of stuff. Remember I said this does all sorts of management of the server, but Docker containers is here now. And we can see all of the containers that I have running. Now we have these images here because again, these are the containers that I'm running, but let's say we wanted to start another MySQL container. If you just click play here, it'll give us the option to set up a bunch of things that should look familiar, right? We can name it something that we want. Uh, we can set its memory limits, its CPU limits. We can decide what ports are exposed or not exposed. We can mount volumes. We can add multiple volumes like here, varlib, MySQL, and we're going to map it to a local host port. All of these are the things that we would do on the command line while we're launching Docker, but we can do them with a GUI here. Now, again, this is nice, I guess, at first, but once you start using Docker, this is more of a hindrance than it is a help. Uh, however, it's nice to have that GUI, especially if you're new to Docker. I'm going to click cancel. Uh, anyway, these are the running containers. There's not a whole lot you can do. You can start them and stop them, uh, that sort of thing. You can restart them, but that's about all you can do from inside a cockpit. Now there is a better way to control Docker with a GUI, but it requires setting up a container to do that. In fact, Portainer is the one that we're going to look at. So let's quickly set up Portainer because it's going to be more robust, but it's a little bit more of a challenge to install because you actually have to use Docker. So let's see, Docker PS, this is what's running. That's what we just saw inside the GUI. Let's actually create another one, Docker run dash D for daemon mode. Uh, the port that we're going to forward is 9,000. That's the port that Portainer runs on, uh, dash V var run docker dot sock. And we're gonna map that internally to var run docker dot sock. Portainer, Portainer. So we'll hit enter. It's going to download that image. It should start it up. If we do a Docker PS, we should see it running. Sure enough, Portainer, Portainer running on port 9000. So if we go back to our browser, we should actually, instead of going to cockpit now, we should go to HTTP colon slash slash Docker. And this is going to be 9000. And it'll bring us to Portainer. Now, the nice thing about Portainer is we actually create an account here. So I'm going to create an account. My username is admin, password. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Start that up. Uh, nope, not going to save that. And now we have the option to, we can actually control a remote container uh, server, or we can uh, look at Azure stuff, that sort of thing. We're going to look at the local Docker environment because that's what we have it running on is that local one. And then just click connect. And now this is actually a much more robust way that we can have a GUI to manage our containers and stuff. Here's our stuff. We have six containers running. Let's click on this. It'll show us those things. We have these images downloaded. We have these networks installed. If you were with me when we set up the MySQL network so that our MySQL stuff can, com can communicate behind the scenes, uh, that's all set up uh, over here. Containers. These are our running containers. Uh, here's that portainer one. But like here's PHP My Admin. We can go in here and look at... Uh, all the information about it. Uh, if we wanted to edit it, we can click on it. And this is where we could change a ton of the things while it's running. We could add another network. Let's say we wanted to join another network or we didn't want it to be part of the MySQL net anymore, or we wanted it to use the built-in Docker things to always restart that sort of a thing. All of these can be controlled and it's a much more robust interface than cockpit is, but it is a little more challenging because you have to use Docker command line stuff. Although I guess if I'm being honest, especially since the cockpit Docker plugin was taken off of the standard Ubuntu repository, maybe it's not any more difficult to install the Docker portainer container, Docker portainer container. Oh my, but uh, it is a little more complicated. You have to do, learn that Docker command line that we did together. I think it's a much better and more powerful interface. There are other interfaces too. I mean, Docker has, you know, some commercial products, but especially when you're getting used to it at first, you want to be able to see and click as opposed to just typing in complex command line tools. And so I really recommend Portainer, although Cockpit is there if you're more comfortable with that kind of an interface, but it will limit you on what you can do while 
while you are uh, managing a server that is actually currently being run. Anyway, Docker is awesome. It's really worth it. Uh, start with the GUI if you want to, but just know that you're probably going to leave the GUI aside and manage things on the command line once you get comfortable with it. But even that is awesome because the GUI doesn't like add another layer on top. It just kind of pulls the strings, right? It does all the command line stuff for you. So if you abandon the GUI, you can still use the command line. It hasn't done anything other than uh, manipulate that command line for you. So Docker is there uh, for you to manipulate by hand once you get comfortable with it. But if you want the training wheels, that sounds bad. It's not really a bad thing to use a GUI, but you can use the GUI and then abandon it without any, any worry about losing precious data and that sort of a thing. Anyway, if you haven't given Docker a try, I really encourage you. And hopefully this GUI, uh, this GUI tutorial will give you even more incentive to give it a try. I'll see you next time.